Welcome to the Family Care Learning Podcast. My name is Scott Hort. I'm the statewide training manager here at Christian Family Care. And today we're going to be talking about shared parenting, working with biological f- parents and family of foster children that you take care of. And we're here with Carrie Baker, and she is also here with at Christian Family Care. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Carrie. I am a licensing specialist here at Christian Family Care, and I have been a licensed foster parent since 2014. So, and I've had a lot of, a lot of kiddos come through my home yeah, and met a lot of different families. That's awesome. Well, great. Well, let's talk about that. So, yeah. So, so why do you do shared parenting and why is it important? Tell us a little bit about that. So shared parenting is something that is very, very important to me. Um, I think it starts with, for me, I feel like I've got a long view and a short view of shared parenting. So I think in the long view, shared parenting is a um, way for me to make sure I have the right mindset with going into foster care as a ministry and that it's not a it's not about me. It's about the kids. It's about their families. Because when I get too focused on myself, um, it, things don't go well. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, I, I need to go into it thinking about the long term of what's going to be best for the child and the family, because if they um, are reunited with their family, then I want to do what I can to build that relationship. Um, and if they don't, I also need them to make sure that they still have that relationship moving forward wherever they, they go. In the short term, mm-hmm. sharing parenting honestly makes it easier for me because if I can set shared parenting on my own terms, then I have the ability to control it and I have the ability to set the boundaries that I want. Yeah, sure. That's really important. So there's so you've already listed a couple of benefits, but let's talk about that. What are some of the benefits? There's benefits to you, you as a foster parent, mm-hmm. to the child, there's benefits to obviously the family mm-hmm. of the child. Tell us a little bit about what are some of the benefits that you see. So the benefits, obviously, for for the child, for them to have that, to not have such, they they have a traumatic separation anyway, and if if anything I can do to maintain that relationship between the parent and the child is going to benefit the child in the long term, um, as well as the parent, because if I'm looking at this as a ministry, then any I I view that I'm ministering to the family as a whole. And so it's yeah. going to, anything that I can do to help that family is going to help everyone. Um, as far as the benefit to my family, yeah. it's amazing to see the relationships that we've been able to build with the families of the children and the fact that now we were years later and we still get to have a relationship with them. We get to see where that child is and how they've grown and how just, it's just very healing for our family. When we do have a kid leave that has been hard to watch that we get to see that they're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. You get to kind of check in on them mm-hmm. and know how they're doing because yes. you have that relationship yes. with their parents. Yes. Okay. That's fabulous. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that there are some challenges along the way too. You know, it's probably not really the mm-hmm. most easiest thing to do in the world, but what are some of the challenges that you've faced? Um, I would say that the challenges that we've had, it, you know, it, there's always that anxiety of what you know, how are things going to, going to work out? What are they going to think of me? It add it does add another, um, level of just busyness or something that I need to be responsible for. Mm. Um, so, so that, that can be a challenge. There can be the challenge of just, uh, judging, being able to judge character and to know how far to let things go. That can be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it really takes a little skill and people skills to be able to really kind of, because you really have to kind of feel out that person to find out, you know, where Mm -hmm. they're at, what they can, what they're like, Mm -hmm. what kind of things you can do to help them or, you know, some of the barriers that you need to set up. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's, that's takes a lot of skill to do that. I imagine it's, and it's practice. Like I, it did not come firsthand, but it was something that we made the choice to do. So it's not just because of having a natural ability or being a people person, because my natural um, bent would be to just shy away, (laughs) you know, and just do what I need to do for the child. But Mm -hmm. um, it's been learned. Yeah, it's been learned. 
Yeah, you've had to really kind of learn. I'm sure you learned a lot along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine there are times where it might have been a, you might have been a little apprehensive, maybe at mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. or and some anxiety. Yes. Can you think of some examples of maybe when where that came into play? Well, I think the anxiety definitely in when I first started that mm -hmm. that anxiety was definitely there on a higher scale. Mm -hmm. um, just the, the anxiety of what are they going to, how are they going to take me and us as a family? Are they going to feel threatened um, by us? Are they going to respond well to my, um, I guess my presence in their life? Mm -hmm. um, so there's that anxiety, um, anxiety that they're not going to agree with what, how I'm taking care of their child. Yeah. The anxiety that they might, you know, come back there's always that anxiety that what they're going to um accuse us of something or you know mm -hmm. that's all that's always there um so yes there's definitely anxieties there yeah and when you build that relationship i imagine that helps a lot having mm -hmm. the relationship with them yes you know really helps a lot and um so so let's talk a little bit about what are some of the techniques or th examples of things that you've done to build that relationship you know things that you've done in the in everyday life or just interaction with 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 them maybe at visits or mm -hmm. that kind of thing so there's a there's definitely a big variety of things i've done over the years yeah. um journaling is a very easy one mm -hmm. you know sending a journal back and forth from a visit um having email phone calls virtual calls those are always options, um, transporting to visits, supervising visits, um, advocating for the family. So mm -hmm. I would say like, those are all things I've done at different times. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you just, I guess just kind of playing each one as it goes to yeah. see how, you know, what the response is. And, and of course I would say all of this is at the always has to run through DCS as to what sure. they, you know, what they're in agreement with for the particular situation. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, so you're building a relationship with the biological parent and you took care of mostly babies, right? Yes. So, so where did you have a chance to help with some of the transportation and things like that? Yes. And you know, I, I always, as a rule, I always, uh, transport to the first visit. And that's one, sure. just a simple thing that I like to do so that I can meet them and start the relationship on my own terms and, mm -hmm. um, set the tone for the relationship because I can go into it and I can introduce myself and I can tell them that I'm here to help you. And I'm here to, you know, you're, you have a beautiful child. I'm here to help you, you know, help you get your family back together. And that right there, just in doing that one thing sets the tone for the relationship. I feel moving forward. Yeah. So that just kind of brings a, a sense of calm to the, mm -hmm. it kind of breaks the mm -hmm. ice for, for that. Yes. Oh, that's great. What kind of things have you been able to do to actually help a first, a birth mom? So, you know, I, well, I, I mean, I do feel like that transporting to the first visit has been just because for them, if I put myself in their shoes, that, that fear of where's my child mm -hmm. and to, for them to be able to put a face with, who their child is with, yeah. that's, I think that's a huge step in putting a family at ease. Yeah. Um, being able to, I always set up a, I have a Google phone number. I always ask DCS if I can have the um, family's phone number because then I can start sending pictures. And again, I'm setting it up on my own terms. So if I can do that, then I am setting the boundaries ahead of time instead of having them come and ask me. Yeah. So those are the two things that I do right off the bat. Yeah. Um, getting, if it could, instead of a Google phone number, it could be an email address. It just depends on what DCS is in agreement with. Um, those are probably the most important things that I right off the bat Mm -hmm. uh, like to do. And I do su I suggest that to my families right away, yeah. um, that I work with. Um, the other thing that I feel has been helpful is advocating for the family with DCS because things drop through the cracks with DCS mm -hmm. very often. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. um, if I can 
promote visits happening. Um, you know, sometimes case aid referrals fall through the cracks. And if I can be advocating with DCS, you know, when are we going to do visits? What can, how can I, um, push that? Or if there's a family member that is looking like they might be able to take the child, mm -hmm. um, and they would be a good placement. I have advocated for that with DCS because I want that child to be in a permanent home yeah. as early as possible. And so I have advocated with DCS to get whatever paperwork done that they need to do to do that it has been another thing I've been able to do. Wow. That's excellent. Yeah. That's so, that's so encouraging to, and probably helps motivate the birth parent to keep working on their mm -hmm. case plan and mm -hmm. everything. And then also, um, I guess if you were thinking of somebody like a foster parent who was a little unease or apprehensive about doing anything with the birth biological family, what kind of things could you tell them to encourage them? So I think the encouragement that I would have is to take start small because it can sound overwhelming, um, especially if you've never done it before. It can sound overwhelming to invest yourself into someone that may be just in a different place than you are in life. And so, but that's why I, I always say pick two things. So for me, it's the um, transporting to the first visit and having a Google phone number. Those are the yeah. two things that I say, those are simple. You can do it. And then after that, then you can see how it feels, what the relationship is like, mm -hmm. and you can, can go from there. So, but starting small, you know, pick two things that you can do mm -hmm. and then you'll know, you know, you'll know what, what needs to come next. And that's where your, mm -hmm. you know, your licensing worker comes in, you know, to work with that, to help you talk through those and think through those challenges. Yeah. There's different, definitely different levels of, of involvement that you can make. Yes. I mean, you can just simply uh, have a journal and yep. make notes and write little encouraging notes yes. or whatever and mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh, that's pretty low key. Uh, or mm -hmm. you can maybe even uh, invite them to a birthday party or a celebration. That's pretty intense, you know, where yes. they actually do some activity. Obviously, you're going to be interacting with the birth mom at medical appointments, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, is that mm -hmm. happen? Have that happened to you? It, it, yes, it has. Um, and, you know, the other thing that I would say is it's not necessarily always a birth parent. It could okay, be good. a grandparent. Right. It could be an aunt or uncle, you know, whoever it is that's in their family that is invested in this child. And mm -hmm. so that's one of the first things that I like to do is find out from DCS who is it that is, you know, is there anyone else in this child's life mm -hmm. so that I've been able to establish contact with whoever seems to be the most um, proactive with this child. And so, yes, doctor's appointments, um, that has been something that we've, we've dealt with. Um, we have gotten to the point with some kiddos where we've done birthday parties or events with the family. Um, but, but yes, it can be as small as a, a journal. It can, you know, it can grow into, um, something as big as a, you know, an independent outside visit with, DCS approval. Um, but I think the thing to remember is that it doesn't have to start that big, yeah. it, you know, because that can be scary. The thought yeah. of, you know, meeting them somewhere, doing something with them. But if you can know that you can start small. And like I said, I like to, I like to start it. So I do it on my own terms. And that's yeah. why yeah. I am the first one asking DCS if, what can I do these couple of things? Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, those are all excellent suggestions and experiences that you thanks for sharing with us today and um yeah we really appreciate you coming in 